like firstly to to really thank Sandy for inviting me here to share with you all um, the journey that we've been on uh, in Ireland, uh, uh, trying to explore how the gut microbiome could be one of the core regulators of brain health. And Hippocrates, who's the father of all medicine, has said that all diseases begin in the gut. And perhaps maybe all treatments can also begin in the gut. Your feelings, your emotions are really gating what's going on in your gut. That your brain is regulating your gut and your physiology. That we have a brain-gut axis. And that's very important. And with the advent of brain imaging in the 1980s, we are able to see that this is actually bidirectional. That if we stimulate the gut and do colonic distension, we can actually visualize that in the brain. And so the, the, the importance of the brain good actually started to emerge. Now, it's been accepted in areas like food intake and satiety, uh, but in, and very much taken in areas of complementary medicine. But in traditional medicine, it was somewhat ignored, and neuroscientists didn't really want to, to engage with it. And that's despite the fact that we have more neurons in our gut than we do in our entire spinal cord. For the last over two decades, I've been interested in how stress affects the brain and how stress affects the body. And, and one of the things that, that we're really interested in is why on the roller coaster of life, if two people are subjected to the same stress, why is someone more uh, uh, um, susceptible? But more importantly, why is someone more resilient? And Hans Elie, who's the father of stress research and coined the term stress, he said it's not stress that kills us, but it's our reaction to it. Stress is a whole body disorder. And it affects every system in the body. And these all interact with the brain and are playing key roles in regulating each other in different ways. We know, for example, in, in the immune system, which plays a key role in, 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 in signaling to the brain that stress will have a key role there. And moreover, even directly in the gut, that stress will affect the barrier function, which then allows certain immune molecules to get in and, 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 and you get an inflammatory state, which will affect then the brain and you have a whole cycle of what's going on. Well, we are living in a microbial world. And that's the reason I'm saying that is because you are, in terms of genes, in terms of genes, you are 99% microbial. We talk about uh, the microbiome very much, and, and, and I'm guilty of this too, we talk about it as if we're synonymous, we're talking about bacteria. But the microbiome is much more than bacteria. It's viruses and bacteriophages and fungi and a whole host of different other <coughs> microorganisms as well. Um, also worth noting is that the weight of your microbiome is about three pounds, which is about the weight of your brain. Also, as a neuroscientist, somewhat uh, humbling. <laughs> As you age, it starts to decline again. And so there is a lot of work now beginning to go into uh, the microbiome at different developmental windows and uh, as we age. If you have a diverse diet, you can maintain a diverse microbiome and that can really help your uh, gut health, your brain health, and all of your immune health and metabolic health as well. We have to kind of look at this in, in, from a public health pers perspective. We're quite interested in that, in that conundrum as well from a brain health perspective. Specific chemotherapeutic drugs, cancer drugs, checkpoint inhibitors, uh, that, that their efficacy was totally dependent on whether you had a certain microbiome or not. And, and so there's a real interaction between drugs and microbiome and microbiome and drugs that we have no idea about before. And, and statins and, and diabetic drugs and all of them are, 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 are going to be regulated by how our microbiome is as well. You have to remember the microbes were there first. And everything we have has happened in the context of, of microorganisms. And that we're not actually, you know, we are co-evolved as humans with microorganisms.